All right, everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Today, I want to talk a little bit about an ongoing subject, and it, it's developing always, the Radioddity GM30, which has turned out to be a very popular radio for GMRS communication. The price point is great, usability is great, but today I want to talk about the update on the firmware from last year, repeater tones, DIY repeater, and as well as antenna choice and manipulating power on the, on the go. So that was part of the original uh, firmware update. So in order to do this, you need to get the uh, software package or the update package, the firmware update package from Radioddity's website. So you go into the support tab and you search for the GM30 and download the most recent. So by that, I'm going to click on the item labeled 0615. And it comes with all the instructions we need. So I'm showing you this, even though I've already done this, I'm showing you this just for simplicity's sake. Um, and obviously this is Windows. I don't even know if this is possible on a Mac or Linux, but it is, uh, you know, what I've got. So I'm showing you what I'm doing. Anyway, open up the PDF file and it gives you very straightforward instructions on how to update the firmware. I didn't find any trouble in there. I just, it was just really straightforward. So uh, one thing I will note about the programming software is it tends to, when you read from the radio, it does tend to restore factory defaults as far as your settings. So what I've had to do when I read from the radio is um, go back through the, the factory or the, the radio settings themselves and click Roger beep off voice off, prompt off, all of this stuff, and reset my screen brightness to, to a low, like a level one or a level two, because the, you know the screen is really bright on this, which is something you can only adjust in the programming software. And we'll see that here, here pretty soon. But I did want to show you, this is a rather uh, long PDF file, but it has all the instructions in order to do this correctly. Um, as you do this, if you haven't even done the original update, you'll gain access to the uh, power shift feature, which is, uh, toggles between high and low on your non-interstitial channels, so the GMRS channels. That's 1 through 7 and then 15 through 22. And then also the repeater channels. So you can toggle from low to high power and back by pressing the asterisk key. And uh, I find that to be really useful. Honestly, I don't use the preset that's high power in the programming software, as you can see here. I don't use that preset myself very often. All right, so looking at the uh, the programming software, we're in it now. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually, it doesn't really reflect the updated version of the firmware. This um, programming software probably needs an update from the manufacturer in order to sync properly with the settings on the firmware. So what I'm gonna do is read from the radio and at this point, I'm assuming you have a, a programming cable and you're paired with your radio um, and you understand that process. So you can see on the screen, this program and then the green light is flashing just as, this, as if you were receiving signal. Um, it's the same when you're, uh, when you're uh, reading or writing to the radio. And so this is the screen you get to with the programming software. And now you'll see things are a little different. You have your one through 22 repeater and then we have starting on um, row 23 or row 31, sorry, um, the eight repeater channels start over and then over again and then over again. So there's 24 DIY. These DIY channels were not available in the original firmware. And this release was June or July last year. So uh, get that update going, get that firmware update, and then your radio will have the ability you can name a DIY channel its own name, so keep that in mind. These settings, or these frequencies, can't be changed on the radio on the fly, unfortunately. So you need to pick your frequencies that you're going to use repeater-wise in these DIY channels uh, before you leave. You need to do this in the computer. and the, pr the programming software is the only way to change that. All right, so what you can do is any one of these 24 settings between 30 and 54 um, rows 30 and 54 you can set that 
if you need to, to just one repeater frequency, just change your tones depending on what you need. Uh, right now they are just simply preset. And I think it would be worth giving these a name other than DIY. So what we have going on here is the ability to program, you know, DIY uh, row 31, 32, 33, all into the repeater one channel, which is 462.55 megahertz, but different tones, which activate the repeaters. That was a pretty good way for them to, to modify this. So looking at our menu items here, uh, you really only need to worry about menu item 12, which is the transmit CTCSS for most repeaters. Now they might have, there might be a repeater out there that uses DCS, the transmit DCS, and some repeaters use a receive tone or CTCSS. But for the most part, we don't need to worry about too much other than menu item 12 and setting that. So uh, on a side note, going back to uh, the repeater frequencies, they're predefined by the FCC. We're not going to be able to change those, so don't try to make up your own because it just it's not going to work with this radio. Um, just for reference, it, this list here is basically from the GMRS reference um, that's never going to change. So keep that in mind as you go about this. The only thing that's going to change is your tones and codes. Going back to the software, uh, I want to have repeaters, uh, ham radio repeaters programmed in, ham radio simplex uh, frequencies, so that I can listen to those if I need to. And that way, if I do need to change radios, I can pull my antenna off, open up my, my two meter repeater or two meter radio and listen to the repeaters and talk back and forth with ham radio operators if I need to. Uh, that is one nice thing about this. But the other really cool thing is, and I haven't tried it, but I imagine you can program radio stations. So if you just want to have presets for radio stations instead of just turning, turning on the radio, uh, I'll have to try that for a future video. It might be kind of fun. So at any rate, this is the general settings I was referring to that the, as you read from the radio, it tends to reset the default settings. So I want to turn the beat tone off, the voice, the Roger off. I just think those things are annoying and hinder the productive use of, of this radio. I like my radios to do, to key up, to transmit, and to receive, and I like to hear the voice coming in from the other end. I don't need the radio talking to me. I don't have any need for, for that. So going into these settings, just pay attention to that as you read from the radio, and then before you write to your radio, the settings, before you write those settings to the radio, make sure that things look the way you want them to each time you use this. And um, you can save these settings, obviously, which is, which is important. I think you need to uh, keep that in mind. But uh, once you get this set, make sure that your repeaters are set the way you want. And uh, you know, go through some of the other settings. But most of the other settings really aren't super useful. Now, I do want to just note that a key feature of these GMRS radios is that there's not a whole lot of programming that needs to happen on the computer. I think that sometimes this can be um, a little bit misconstrued because a lot of us ham radio operators can get in here and reprogram our radios frequently. I don't, and I really with GMRS, they're, they're so flexible, I just don't worry about that. All right, so I've shown you the other stuff here, and I think it's super useful to do the firmware update. Uh, GMRS radios, not necessarily um, super useful to do update on your programming on the computer all the time. I think that one of the beauties of this is that you change the CTCSS or the DCS tones on the radio on the fly, and it saves those. Uh, that's something that's different from the ham radios, where if you change those tones in VFO, it goes across all of the different uh, frequencies you select. And you can't change it once it's saved. Well, these frequencies are saved as, as channels, and each frequency or each channel saves its own CTCSS or DCS. And that's what makes these really handy and worthwhile to have over using a modified UV5R or a programmed UV5R. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really useful. And what I would want to talk about here is antenna selection. I'm just going to tell you this works really well, and I think that everybody should just get out, buy one, support a, a guy who's really doing good things with radio. And uh, 
hamstudy.org. If you go to signalstuff.com, get the signal stick. That's what this is. That's the two meter, 440 centimeter. And get the BNC connector with the BNC adapter for this radio. That's what I recommend you do. And I recommend you do that with all of your handhelds. This antenna, I will use it for all of my handhelds. And it makes it so there's one, one antenna for all the radios. And it just makes sense. And then if I need to use a more powerful antenna, I can whip out my Yagi, which I know not everybody has that, but I think it's worth, uh, worth having for me. So this makes it easy. And it's a good antenna that's not super expensive. You can definitely afford to have more than one if you're investing in these radios. Testing, this is WRFS 364. Testing, WRFS 364. Radio out of the GM30. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this attachment really quick before we close this out. That is the BNC to SMA male adapter for this radio. And you can get them for all your radios that have an SMA male. And you can get them for the SMA female. So that makes it so I can plug this BNC on in a quick click on all my radios that have this adapter, including my ham radio. So here's my FT25R. I've got one installed there. And that quickly I can be using that radio. So it's really nice. It actually is really good for the radio too. It saves the threads on the SMA to use this kind of system. And it gives you the versatility of connecting a coaxial that has a BNC connector style on it. So I recommend this. This is a great way to go. This antenna is so, it's just a good price for a good antenna. So I do recommend it. It's the only one that I'm going to be using on the GM30. All right, that's it for the GM30 for, uh, for this time. Probably be more, but anyway, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you everyone who subscribed and give me thumbs up. Uh, if you enjoy this, please thumbs up. If you do want to support the channel directly, there is a link for buy me a coffee down below. And again, if you want to buy a GM30, make sure you click on the link below for the discount at radiodity.com. All right, y'all take care and I'll check you out down the trail.